guitar practice session 9, 10, 24. These will be basically fairly sloppy practice sessions where I'm just going to be going over whatever it is I currently think I need work on. The idea being that if I put the practice sessions together, it might give me a little bit more pressure to practice. It might be useful if anybody else is working on similar things, and it might allow other people to give me kind of possibly feedback so that maybe I can do things more efficiently or change up my method or look at things from a new perspective. That being said, I'll try to provide some of these resources such as the Excel worksheet. I really think basically acting though or possibly actually doing some kind of like teaching of the information you're trying to learn is really an effective way to actually learn the information. So if you want to pick up the Excel worksheets or, or whatever materials that I have and do your own basically presentations on it, you know, don't worry about the, you know, copyright or copying the worksheet or anything like that. Use it and adjust it, do whatever you want to do with it, whatever. So the thing I'm currently looking at are basically thinking about intervals but I want to be able to combine that with as many other things as possible to try to get a, a kind of a routine together to get some more of the kind of wonky uh, theory type of stuff down at one time and see how to kind of visualize it on the guitar. So we're going to, so I'm basically thinking of intervals and I'm mixing that in with the concept of uh, modes as well as positions on the guitar, positions on the guitar. I usually number the positions, so I'm looking at what I would call position one, but other people name them with uh, the the caged system. So I'm looking at like the G-shaped, caged shape, uh, or, or you can name it in the modes, saying this is basically a minor mode if you started at the, at the top of it. And I'm trying to look at different ways that people name things as well as different ways that I might name things, just so I can see things from different perspective, not just so I can communicate from with other people, but I also find that it makes me think differently about like the guitar. So then when I, so that, that gives me different ideas on how I might approach things. And uh, the more different angles I look at the same thing and can understand it from a different kind of angle, I think the better I basically know uh, the topic. So that's the general idea. And then after I put some of these just sloppy uh, practice sessions together, I'm thinking maybe I pull some of that together and make a course out of it if it seems worthwhile uh, to do that. So basically this worksheet is going to give me the, the fretboard. I like to map it out with the low string on top so that when I'm looking at it, it matches what I see on the guitar as though I'm behind the guitar. And, and then I'll actually reverse the guitar possibly on the screen when you're watching it so that you can see it going the same way. I have, a, I think I have a, a little bit of dyslexia, not, not like bad or anything, but I kind of, <laughs> helps me a lot to have everything going the same way. I don't know if that's just me or whatever, but that's what I, that's what I do uh, here. So that's going to be uh, the general idea here. And then I'm also going to have absolute numbers for the modes. So I'm going to try to number the modes in relation to the C major so that I can then have an absolute or unchanging number of the modes and try to see each of the modes as they relate to whatever mode that I'm in. And this time I'm going to be working on, like I'm going to be looking at the intervals related to the Dorian mode in what I would call shape one or the cage G shape position or the Aeolian position, however you want to uh, name it. But I'm going to be starting on uh, the D and then thinking about the intervals from here. Also trying to think about, you know, the scales, of course, from there. Also trying to think about the, the steps from step to step as opposed to intervals and also be working on like the inverse intervals. I'm trying to kind of work all that in uh, to as tight of an exercise that I can kind of go over that stuff as uh, I can. And so sometimes I do that and sometimes I might just go into some random, again, just sloppy playing. I'm not going to edit it or anything like that, just a practice session. So that's the idea. Here is our worksheet. We're going to have the top string on top. That's going to be the low or heavy E string, the one closest to the ceiling. And I do that so everything is kind of orientated the right way or the same way when I practice, meaning top to bottom, left to right. This way is going to be the same when I'm behind the guitar looking if I'm right-handed, top to bottom, left to right. 
Now when I put this on the screen, I might flip the orientation of the guitar so it looks like I'm left-handed because you're looking at this side of the guitar and therefore you can see it top to bottom, left to right. That's gonna be the, my general idea. I'm looking, I'm currently practicing in this shape, which is basically, I would call it shape number one. Kind of the rock and roll pentatonic would look something like that, but I'm gonna use all seven notes. I could also call it basically, I'm starting to name it as well, in essence, the uh, minor scale shape because I'm, na I'm naming it by the first note here. So if I played this scale shape from the A, you would have an Aeolian mode, otherwise known as the minor scale. So I'm trying to name it that way as well. Although, of course, you can play any mode within this shape. We're going to be practicing from the Dorian mode uh, in this shape this time. And uh, you can also call it basically a G shape if you're looking at a caged system, which many people do. And I'm just trying to, I repeat this in my mind just so I can look at it from basically different angles and the reason that would be is because you could say, well, if I was on the Ionian or major, then I would use this position, which is a G shape. So that G shape down here can be moved up here. And that's basically, uh, so that's why you can name this after the cage system, which is an open G shape to, to but that only relates to the related major <laughs> scale, right? So I can call it once again, generically, a lot of people call it position number one. I can call it, if I start from this note, I would naturally be playing a, uh, a Aeolian, uh, which I'm also gonna start to call uh, position or mode number six, that's just the minor scale, but I wanna give them absolute numbers here as well. So I can just call it mode number six with relation to the major scale because that allows me to count, uh, to, to, to kind of orientate it in my mind. So I'm also gonna do that. And then, and then what I wanna look at here is the Dorian. So I wanna look at the Dorian mode while I play in this shape, which is basically if I played from the top, an Aeolian uh, shape. So if I knew that this was a minor shape, the first question is, well, how might I get to the uh, Dorian? I know that the Dorian is number two mode in my absolute mode structure related to the major scale. So, and I, and I know that I, what I want to, so, and I know what I'm on is the sixth mode right here, because this is the Aeolian, which would be the sixth of the major scales. The, it's the sixth mode. So if I count that up, if I count up in this shape until I get to the second, it would be, so if I start at the six, seven, eight, that would be eight or one. And then the two is right there. That's what I was looking for. I got confused. Another way I might do it is first try to get to the related major because that's most people's key to kind of think from. So if this is the sixth and I'm trying to get to the uh, the back to the to the eighth, uh, which would be the related major scale, it would just be six, seven, eight. And then now I can say, okay, well that C, that's if I started from there, I'd be in the major or Ionian mode. And now I'm in the Dorian mode, which starts at the second because it's the second mode related to the major. So it would be just two steps up and then we'd go one, two, and that's gonna be uh, my Dorian. Another way we might basically see this is to, is to look at it basically as shapes. So I'm trying to memorize, I'm trying to get an idea of, well, where does the Dorian start like shape wise? And I'm, break, I'm currently breaking down my shapes into uh, into this idea of there's within each of these shapes, there's what I'm calling a double stop and, and then a square, meaning there's these two here and then a square shape. And then, and then we have this bit right here, which I'm calling the meat of the hamburger, because when I look at the pentatonic, I'm going to get into a hamburger shape, but it's just basically a two note, uh, a two note on one string. And then you get into the square and the double stop, which is shifted up because of because of the kink and the tuning or stepping up the curb is what I'm going to basically be calling it. So so that means then that if I'm looking at the Dorian mode, where does where's the root in terms of shapes? It's in the the bottom part of the double stop of the double stop square shape, and it's in the uh, the, the, the top part when the double stop is on the right. So it's always in this 
kind of double stop part of the shape. So you got the double stop square, and then you've got the, the, you know, the square and the double stop, which is shifted right here. So that's another, so if I know that and I look at this shape, I'm just gonna be like, okay, where's the square? Here's the square. Du, 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 du. And so the double stop part is right here. So the Dorian must be, you know, right there because it's at the bottom of the double stop square. All right, where's my other, I know that the other, my roots are gonna be right here and here. Uh, so I'm going to say, okay, that makes sense. So if I was to, so if I was to look at this this way, I could say, how does this move up? It's going to be, it's going to be do do. Now the other thing, I know if I start on this D, and what if I imagined that D was the top string? I could say, well then that would be like it would be over here on position number ten, right? And I would be playing the Dorian, the Dorian mode over here in position number 10, which will look the same in essence, accounting for the step up in the, in the tuning if I was to start from here. So in, in shape number 10, uh, I would call, this is what I call uh, position number three, uh, because if I was to play the related I call it, I just call it position number three because that's the generic name if I started at this as being one. But I also know that uh, you can call it a D-shaped position because if I looked at the related major, which is a C, it would have that kind of D-shape right there. So if you use the cage system, you might call that uh, like a, like a D-shape. And then again, I could call it a Dorian shape. So position number three, the D shape, I could call it a Dorian shape, and I'm orientating that on the idea that I call it shape mode number two, Dorian, if I started at the top of the shape here, because if I played it through here, it would be Dorian. And you can see what happens here. If I play this through, it's gonna be uh, da, 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 and then, and so that same shape then would be the same down here. If I started here, but I'm playing like the Dorian mode from here. So that's just another way that I'm trying to get an, a visualization. Well, I can kind of play this as though I was playing from the top string, position number three, or the D-shaped caged position, or the mode number two Dorian position that I'm basically playing over here. And then what I'm playing here, I'm starting at the bottom of what I call the double stop, what I call the double stop box. And then it's going to go up to what I'm calling the meat of the hamburger. There's the two note per string. Boom, boom, right there. And then I've got to go back, which is the normal process after you go to that two note per string. If there's not a kink in the tuning, back to here, boom, boom, boom. And that's going to get me to this octave. That's one round or, or one octave of it. And so I'm going to focus on that octave uh, right now. So let's say... I look at my intervals, so now I'm going to practice my intervals and say if I'm in the Dorian and I'm going from one to two of the Dorian, to, to, to one to two of the Dorian, then uh, the second of the Dorian I know is going to be a two note away major second. So it's two notes away. It's a, it's a major second, even though I know the Dorian is a minor mode indicated by the little, the little two here that's a, that's a lowercase two. So it's a two note away uh, major second. And I also want to start thinking about the inverse of the intervals. So if that's a, a and I know it's a two note away major second because I can just obviously see it's two notes away here. What's the inverse? Well, there's 12 notes, 12 minus two would be 10. 10 notes away, that interval is called a uh, minor, uh, a 10 note away minor seven, which actually is in the Dorian mode, which is kind of interesting. And it's interesting that when you make something that's a major, look at the inverse, the inverse is usually minor. Uh, and then the exceptions are the perfects, which, which are inverted to the other perfects, right? So, so this one, if I, so, and so if I invert it, it's a 10 note away major or minor seven. Now, how do I, how can I prove that? Because it's only three notes back. It's because if I counted this way up, 
then it would be 10 notes away. So when I think of it as a circle, it's 10 notes away. In other words, if I started from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, we get back to the D here. So that's that. And I also know that the second of the Dorian, what mode is that? It's well, if the if the Dorian is absolute mode number two related to our key of the major mode number one or Ionian, then uh, the second of the Dorian is going to be is going to be uh, the second plus one be because we're starting one mode away from the major, which I'm going to call absolute no mode number three with relation to the major scale. And therefore, this E, if I started the same shape from there, would be the Phrygian uh, mode. OK, so then I think I overkilled that one. Let's go to the next one. And so now we know this is going to be the third. So I'm just walking up and saying, well, okay, the third of a Dorian. It's a minor mode, and therefore the third is a three note away. Minor third. I can see it's three notes away right here. I can count it right up. And I can also say, well, what's the inverse of that if I measured from here back to here? That would be uh, 12 minus 3, which would be 9. So, so that would be a 9. And a 9 is a 9 note away major uh, 6. So that's interesting that that's in actually in our mode here as well. So if I measured, in other words, from here to here, which is the normal way you would go, we're getting a three note away minor third. If I measured from the F back to the D, that would be, I believe, a nine note away major six, if I didn't mess that up for it. So I'm trying to get to see the inverse as I go through our my exercises here. And so then I'm going to go to the fourth and say, OK, what about the fourth of a, and I also know that the third of a Dorian, what's the, what's the mode of the third of the Dorian? Well, so if I start on absolute mode number two, it's just going to be the third position plus one, because two is one away from, the, from what we start with if it was the Ionian. And that gives us absolute mode number four, which is the Lydian mode. So the third of the Dorian is the start of the Lydian mode if we played the same shape from there. <laughs> All right, I think I did that right. Let's go to the fourth. Let's go to the fourth. All right, so then I'm going to say now I'm on the fourth, and I know that the fourth of the Dorian is a perfect fourth, like many, many scales. So perfect fourth right underneath, unless you have the kink in the tuning, and it's a a perfect fourth is actually five notes away. It's a five note away perfect fourth. And that means the inverse, if I went from here to here, would be 12 minus five, which would be, what, seven. And seven is a perfect fifth. So that's what I mean by the perfect fourth and the perfect fifth are inverses of each other. And therefore, if I count from here to here, that's going to be a five note away perfect fourth. But if I start from the G to the D, measuring from the G, it's going to be a, a seven note away perfect fifth, which is, and I know that the distance between these is five because the distance between two strings is five notes because the guitar is tuned to be perfect fourth distance between the strings except for the kink and the tuning. All right, and so then that's that one. Did I say everything on that one? I also know that the fourth mode of the Dorian is going to be four plus one in terms of absolute modes therefore absolute mode number five which is mixolydian mixolydian being a major mode indicated by the capital letter here all right let's go to mode no, let's go to step number five okay so now i'm going to go to, to number five and so so now i'm on the fifth of the dorian i know is a seven note away perfect fifth <laughs> seven note away perfect fifth and uh and the inverse of a seven note away perfect fifth is and i know it's by the way i can count that because i know the distance between these two is five and then six seven seven notes away seven note away perfect fifth the inverse of a seven note away perfect fifth would be uh 12 minus 7 7 8 9 10 11 12 which is of course the 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 five note away perfect fourth 
So these two are inverted. How did you even know he was there if you were right above him? Because I was inverted. That's how. I don't know what I'm talking about. So in any case, that's that. And so that means that if I go from D to A, that's going to be a seven note away perfect fifth. But if I measured from A to D, the inverse, even though, you know, the octaves, I'm not counting octaves, just pitch wise. If we think of it as a circle, then we're going down. Uh, that would be going for a, a uh, five note away perfect fourth. So going this way, top to bottom, A to D, seven note away perfect fifth going from bottom to top, five note away, perfect fourth. Okay, so now let's go to the sixth. We'll go to the sixth here. And and by the way, the, 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 the fifth of the Dorian is five plus one or six, which is the uh, Aeolian mode. All right, now we'll go to the sixth of the Dorian. The sixth of the Dorian, I happen to know, is the funny one that's differentiating from what's the we measure the minor modes such as Dorian 2 which is the Aeolian and it has a major 6 even though it's a minor mode because it has a minor mode is defined by having a minor third so we have a major 6 here uh, and that's interesting just in and of itself right I mean that's interesting so that's going to be back here <laughs> That's what a, that would be a nine note away major six. That shape is a nine note away major six. I can prove that by saying I can count this would be from here five, ten minus one is nine. So it's a nine note away uh, major six. And the inverse of a nine note away major six would be 12 minus nine, which would be nine, 10, 11, 12, three note away minor third. So the inverse of a major is generally a minor. So if I played from D to, to B, that would be a nine note away major six. But if I think of myself as measuring from B to D, that would be a three note away uh, minor third. Okay, so then let's say, and we know that the sixth of the Dorian is six plus one or absolute mode number seven. Mode number seven is the Locrian mode. All right, I'm going to go to the seventh of the Dorian. The seventh of the Dorian. We know that the seventh of the Dorian, as a proper minor mode should be, it, it's a minor seven. Ten note away minor seven. That looks like that. The inverse of a ten note away minor seven would be, I know it's, by the way, it's a ten note away because if I count from here, five, ten notes, and then twelve minus ten, the inverse is two, Therefore, the inverse of a 10 note away minor sec seventh is a two note away major second. So if I measure, in other words, from D to C, that's a 10 note away minor seven. If I measure from C to D, that would be a two note away major second. We also know that the seventh of the Dorian is seven plus one or eight. There's only seven modes. Uh, therefore, 8 minus 7 is 1, which is Ionian, back to the major scale here if I was to start from C. And then we get back to, of course, the octave. So we get back to the octave. Okay. And so I can also just take a look at the intervals here. If I go from uh, here, so if I go from the 1 of the Dorian to the 2 of the Dorian is a whole step. From the two of the Dorian to the three of the Dorian is a half step. From the three of the Dorian to the four of the Dorian is a whole step. Four of the Dorian to the five of the Dorian is a whole step. Five of the Dorian to the six of the Dorian is a whole step. Six of the Dorian to the seventh of the Dorian is a half step. Seven of the Dorian to the eight of the Dorian is a whole step. So the question often is, well, where are my half steps? And I know the half steps, of course, are going to be in the boxes. So here's my box in the shape. Here's my box here. And then here's my box here, which is distorted because of the kink and the tuning. So, but because I'm starting at the bottom of the box, there's two notes in between before I get to the top of the other box, which has the, 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 the half steps in it. So if I go one, two, three, my half steps between the two, three, and then there's two notes in between, three, four, five, and then we get to six, seven. So in the Dorian, the half steps are two, three, six, seven, 
two, three, six, seven. And, and then, so that's gonna be the half steps. Okay, so now let's go backwards. I'm gonna try to do the same uh, uh, intervals, but this time counting from here, which means we're starting like at the inverse. So now I'm gonna say, all right, if I start from this D, uh, is that the D? Uh, and then I go back to here, what interval is that? Well, I know that I know that that's going from what I would say eight down to seven. Or by the way, let's just think about it from here. If I if I go to the bottom of this bit, I'm at the bottom of of what I would call the the double stop uh, the double stop. Uh, box or the box double stop and so I'm over here in the double stop part and then it goes and then we go down do 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 and then we're going up to what I would call the two note per string hamburger boom boom and then we're going to what I would call the bottom part of the double stop box shape which would be do 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 so if I counted that out starting here at eight eight being the octave, it would be eight, seven, six, five, four, uh, three, whoop, what did I do? It would be eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, eight, seven, it? eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, going back and forth gets a little wonky sometimes here so I'm gonna say so then if I bring this back up to here I'm gonna put this one at the top so now if I went backwards and say now we're on the seven and I'm going f interval from here back to here then that's gonna be I know that that's the seventh and I know it's a Dorian minor mode, so it's a 10 note away, minor seven. But if I count the notes in between, there's only two notes in between. So I, so I could figure that out by saying, well, there's two notes in between, but I'm going backwards, so the inverse is 12 minus two, which is how I get to the 10 note away, minor seven, which I can prove by selecting like any D and seeing how far up I have to go to get to, to the next one. So here's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, ten. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, I was supposed to go, it's a ten note away, ten note away, minor seven. I'm going to start at the C and say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Something, something is wrong here. I'll go. Now, I was right the first time. If I start at the D and say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I get to the C. I started to think that I was in, I was doing my in Ionian, so my my head's starting to get a little fuzzy here. Might have to stop soon. But so so that's going to be that one. And then if I go back to this one, okay, now I'm going from the seventh to the sixth of the Dorian. So I happen to know the six of the door, and that's that funny one that has a, uh, that's different from the related minor because it has a major sixth in it. That's the differentiating note within it. And that happens to be a nine note away major six. So if I went back this way, nine note away uh, major six. So how do I know that? Well, if I went this way, measuring from the B to the D, I can see that that is three notes away, and three notes away would be a a minor third, and so that means that twelve minus three is the nine note away major six. So if I'm measuring from D to B, from this one to this one, nine note away major six. If I'm going from B to D, three note away minor third. Okay, okay. And then let's go back to this one. So now I'm gonna go back to the fifth. I happen to know that the fifth is a seven note away perfect fifth right above it. If I measure from top 
this way, I happen to know it's seven that away because it's a Dorian, and that's what the fifth is on the Dorian. Uh, I can see that there's five notes between these. If I measured from the A, 12 minus five is seven, and that's where I get the seven notes away. So if I go from D to A, we have seven note away, perfect fifth. If I go from A to D, set, we have a five note away, perfect uh, fourth. Okay, and then let's go from this one back here. So now we're gonna go from five to, to four of the Dorian, and I happen to know the fourth of the Dorian is a, is a five note away perfect fourth. So I can see that by saying, okay, if I measured this way, there's five, because there's five notes between a string, six, seven, seven notes away, but I'm measuring from the higher pitch note Therefore, 12 minus seven is five. That's where I get the five note away perfect fourth. So if I'm measuring from D from the bottom to G, that's gonna be a five note away perfect fourth. If I'm measuring from the G top to, to D, that's gonna be a seven note away perfect fifth. All right, let's go from the fourth to the third. And notice as I'm still comparing to this note, not this D, you can compare it to either one, but I'm trying to compare it in the reverse set in here. So now I'm saying, okay, I happen to know that the third of a Dorian, because it's a minor mode, is a three note away minor third. So if I go from uh, here to here, that's gonna be a three note away minor third. I can see that because if I count down, it would be from here, it'd be five, 10, nine, and so if I count that way, that would be a nine note away major six and 12 minus nine is three. And that's how I get the three note away minor third. So if I go from here to here, hope I did that right. Am I doing that right? Yeah, three note away minor third. If I go from here to here, that's gonna be a uh, nine note away major uh, six, okay? And then I think I hopefully I got that right. I'm getting a little hazy here. We're gonna go to the second then. I'm still not measuring from this one, but from this one down here. So now I'm gonna say, all right, I happen to know that the second of a Dorian is a two note away major second, like most modes are. And how do I know that? Well, the distance between these notes is five, 10, and that would 12 and 10 would be a 10 note away minor seventh. 12 minus 10 is two, and therefore this is a two note away, uh, which would be a major second. So if I go from D to E, two note away major second. If I go from E to D, that would be a, a what did I say? 10 note away minor seven. So those are inverses of each other. And then we get back, of course, to the octave. All right, let's go. Now I'm gonna to try to go around the horn going from this D and then go around the top up to this D. So I'm gonna be starting then on you know this shape, which is gonna be, now I'm at, I'm starting here, which is at the, the top of the double stop or the box double stop. So I'm starting here. And then because of the kink in the tuning, uh, I'm shifting up to here, right? So now I'm, 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 I'm up here because of the kink and the tuning, and I'm going duh, uh, duh, duh, and then I'm going here, which is actually the top part of the double stop box, which you can see here because the E's are repeated. So I'm going boom, 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 which is gonna repeat in a different octave up top, still part of the double stop box, boom, 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 to the bottom part of what I would call the double stop box. Boom, boom, or just boom right there. So if I count that out, I can say, all right, if I start at this D right here, that's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That repeats five, six, seven, eight. So it'd be one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, uh, eight, or one. All right. So then let's go ahead and I'm gonna just do the same exercises to look at my intervals shapes basically down here. So I just, I just do this basically every morning. It's quite tedious, but I kind of like it actually. 
I don't know. I'm a little strange. I mean, we're going to say, okay, so now we're going to say, like, that this is, uh, if this is the one and I'm going to the second, the second of the Dorian is a two note away major second. So two note away major second. This is the shape uh, down here, which is up one than it would be because of the, because we had to step up the invisible curb. That's what I call it typically. And so there is that. Uh, and then uh, we also know that the second of the Dorian is, uh, uh, Dorian is, uh, it, it, the second plus one or the third mode which would be the Phrygian mode the inverse of this would be the second the inverse of, of a two note away second would be 12 minus 2 or 10 which would be a 10 note away minor 7 so when I play from D to E this way this is a two note away major second if I was playing to E from E to D that would be that would be a 10 note away minor 7 Okay, and then if I go, if, if I go from here to here, now we're looking at the uh, third of the Dorian, the third of the Dorian. Now this shape looks like it would be a major third, but it's actually a minor third because we're stepping up the invisible curb because of the kink in the tuning, you could say. And so, so now we're saying that this is a three note away minor third. And when I count this up to see that distance, I have to start from here instead of going straight down to say that's five notes away. I have to go from here to here. That's five notes away. Five, four, three. So that's why, where I get to a three note away minor third within this position because of the kink and the tuning. And we know that the inverse of a three note away minor third would be 12 minus three, which would be a nine note away major six. So if I go from D to F, three note away minor third going from the bottom F to D nine note away major six we also know that the third of the Dorian is three plus one or four absolute mode number four which is the Lydian mode a major mode let's go to the fourth of the Dorian the fourth of the Dorian is here so now we're going from here to here boom boom the fourth is usually right underneath but now it's, it's shifted up, looks like kind of like a flat fifth position if it weren't for the kink of the tuning. And I could see that it's actually five notes away because I could just see five notes is from here to here instead of from here to here because of the kink in the tuning. So I'm just gonna go, all right, that's five notes away. And we know that the inverse of a five note away perfect fourth is 12 minus five or a seven note away perfect uh, fifth. So if I measure from D to G, five note away perfect fourth. If I go from G bottom up to uh, D, that's going to be a seven note away uh, uh, perfect fifth. Okay, hopefully I got that right. And then we're going to go to the next one, which is the fifth. We also know that the, f well, wait, let's go to the fifth. And we're going to go to the fifth here. And so now we have the fifth uh, measured from <coughs> here which is gonna be right here. Usually it would be back one, but we had to go up because of the kink in the tuning. All right, and so that's gonna be a fifth and that's gonna be a seven note away perfect fifth. We know that the inverse, and I can count that by saying here's here, that would be five notes away, 10 notes away, 10, nine, eight, seven. So seven note away perfect fifth. And I can say that that's gonna be, uh, the inverse would be 12 minus seven, five note away, perfect fourth. So if I go this way, from D to A, that's a seven note away perfect fifth, going from A to D is a five note away perfect fourth, because it's the inverse. And then I'm gonna go from the fifth to the sixth, and so that looks like this. Uh, we're gonna go to do it like that. Now again, that looks shifted up, that almost looks like a shape <clears throat> for uh, like a, a minor seven but it's shifted up because of the kink at the tuning. So here we can see it's actually nine notes away because it would be five, 10 minus one is nine, nine note away major six. The inverse of a nine note away major six is a uh, nine to 11, three note away minor third. So if I go from D to B, 
that's a nine note away major six <clears throat> from B to D, three note away minor third. All right, let's go to the seventh. <clears throat> the seventh, we know from the Dorian, is a proper minor seventh, 10 note away minor seven. And again, because of the kink of the tuning, the shape's a little bit uh, different because you would think it would be back here uh, where we start, right? So, but it's up here because the kink of the tuning says this is five notes away and that's 10 notes away uh, down here. The inverse of that would be 12 minus 10, which would be two, which would be a two note away major second. So if I measure from D to C, 10 note away minor seven, measuring from C to D, two note away major second. Now I repeat that up top. So now I'm gonna try to look at this skipping this D. So we're actually going a whole octave up, which is gonna shift our shapes a little bit because normally when we think of the shapes, we think of them within two octaves. But now I'm thinking of, of this A compared to this D way down here, which is a, another octave away. So if I measured from this D up to this A, uh, <clears throat> what, what does that look like? Well, we know we're back to an A because we're repeating this and we know that's going to be the seventh, which is a uh, perfect fifth. How can I count that up? Well, if I count the difference this way, it would be 5, 10, 15, 16, 17. So that would be 17 going that way. There's only 12 notes in the musical alphabet. So 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 would be five. And so going from here to here would basically be uh, a five note away, which would be a perfect fourth. And then the inverse of that would be 12 minus five, which would be the seven note away perfect fifth. So I can start to just see that shape as saying, okay, that's gonna be, if I measure from, from the bottom, the D, if I'm thinking of the D as like my root, that's gonna be a, a seven note away perfect fifth. And the inverse of that going from A to D down here is gonna be a five note away perfect fourth is in essence how that is working out. Okay, let's then go to the, to the B. And so now we're going to the sixth again. So now I'm gonna repeat this process now looking at this B compared to this D. If, if I, I happen to know that if I'm measuring from this D to that B in Dorian, that's a nine note away major six because that's what the Dorian is and the, and the Dorian, the sixth is that funny major part of the Dorian. But if I count this out, it would be five, 10, 15. So if I went from B to D, 15 notes away, 15 minus 12, 12, 13, 14, 15 is three. You'd get, in essence, if you think of it as a circle, uh, you'd get three note, you get a three note away, uh, which would be a major third. And 12 minus three is nine, and that's how you get the nine note away major uh, six. So if I'm looking at this, now I messed up my finger, and to like from here to here, so, so now I'm going from here to here. If I measure from the bottom, I'm gonna say that's gonna be a nine note away major six. If I was thinking of the B and measuring up, that's gonna be a three note away minor third. And then if I go to this C, now I'm on uh, the seventh here again, and I'm measuring it from this C down to here so here's in essence my shape like that which i'd probably be playing more like this or something but uh so now we have that and i know that the seventh of the dorian is a 10 note away minor seventh how can i count that well if i went from here to here it'd be 5 10 15 14 12 minus 14 12 13 14 is two notes away so if I measured from the C, it'd be a two note away major second, 12 minus two is 10. So from here to here is a 10 note away major seventh. So I can just start to memorize that shape and just add it, add it to my shape memorization, right? If I went from, started this at my, this, if I started here to here, that would be 
a 10 note away major seventh. If I went from the C as my starting point to here, we have a two note away major second. All right, I think I'm kind of brain dead.